Welcome. So far, we have learnt about many processing methods of the natural gas and in these methods, we found that what are the various techniques of removing the various types of impurities to get the uh, methane, methane, increase the methane fraction and among these various techniques we have learnt, we have seen that many of the techniques, many of the uh, ways are based on the low temperature that is based on the refrigeration or liquefaction. Now, uh, this refrigeration liquefaction have been uh, dealt with in the thermodynamics and in many other uh, subjects like refrigeration itself. But when it comes to natural gas, we know that the natural gas consists of methane, nitrogen, etc., uh, helium, for example. So, some of many of these gases are having very low boiling points, and there the ways of their uh, refrigeration or cooling down or the liquefaction needs some special treatment. That is why in these a series of lectures, we shall be looking into the various ways of cooling uh, and liquefying these gases and also we will see that how these principles can be applied for the various other processing methods of the natural gas. So, in this uh, particular lecture series, this is about cryogenic refrigeration and liquefaction in natural gas systems. So, in this first uh, of this in the series, we shall learn about the applications of the liquefaction refrigeration in natural gas processing, then principle of creating creation of the low uh, temperatures, utility needed for uh, carrying out the liquefaction refrigeration and then what is thermodynamically ideal refrigeration and then we will see the coefficient of performance and figure of merit. So, first let us come to the applications of this refrigeration and liquefaction in natural gas systems. So, we have learnt already that for example, if we want to store the natural gas and there are various ways of storing natural gas. For example, we can compress it and or we can liquefy it. When we liquefy the natural gas for a given mass, we occupy the least volume. So, liquefaction of natural gas is one of the very important ways of storing natural gas. So, that is why in that case we need these kind of techniques of liquefaction and refrigeration. So, to liquefy the gaseous natural gas, we go for this kind of refrigeration and liquefaction or we to want to recover the various types of hydrocarbons other than the methane. For example, ethane, propane, butane, etcetera, uh, we need this kind of techniques and you know that in the LPG that is the liquefied petroleum gas which we use in our day to day life at our home that consists of basically uh, butane and propane. So, those things are also coming from the natural gas. So, these also need for their storage, they need this kind of low temperature techniques and liquefaction. Then to remove nitrogen, we have learnt already that how to remove nitrogen, then to remove carbon dioxide and also to remove helium. So, all these things need this kind of technique things. Now, here we have the first principle that appropriate thermodynamic cycles are used. So, all these uh, refrigeration and liquefaction are based on some thermodynamic cycles and if you uh, go into the thermodynamics book, you will find that there are uh, dedicated chapters on the various types of liquefaction and uh, not liquefaction, the refrigeration techniques. Uh, I shall not be going into the all those techniques, I shall be confining myself only those uh, methods which are um, used in the uh, cryogenic or the natural gas industries. So, and these uh, thermodynamic uh, cycles involve that there are basic few processes uh, which are there for the refrigeration. That is first is that we compress the process fluid at some ambient temperature and pressure. So, whatever process fluid is there, it is coming generally coming from the uh, ambient. So, we compress it at uh, from that ambient temperature and pressure and then in during this compression, we know that compression involves uh, a heat generation that heat of compression comes out and uh, also we have learnt earlier uh, that the when we are carrying out this compression, the we can carry out is either isothermally or we can carry out either adiabatically and we have found also that if we carry out the compression isothermally, then it will be uh, involving least amount of work. So, that is why it is important for, for us 
to make the compression process as isothermal as possible. So, that is why in this compression what we do that we reject the heat of compression to a coolant. So, as we learnt earlier that in the compression we use many stages sometimes and in between the two stages we use intercoolers. So, intercoolers are used to make uh, to approach the isothermal condition. Then after we have compressed the process fluid what we do with the cool again we cool the compressed fluid in a heat exchanger. Then after the, this cooling is done first cooling is done then further cooling of the process fluid by expansion. Then we carry out the expansion uh, of the cooled and the compressed fluid to the ambient pressure and this expansion causes some more temperature drop of the process fluid and this can be done either by some throttling device or by some work producing device for example, turbine. So, this we shall learn about a bit later and then what we do that after uh, the cooling has been occurred has occurred then it may be so that uh, the cooled uh, fluid may get into two phases that means, it can produce liquid and the gas or it can also remain in single phase. So, whatever phase it remains the vapor is again returned to the uh, compressor after warming up to the ambient inlet temperature because the pressure uh, after the expansion is brought back to the initial pressure uh, or the inlet pressure of the compressor while, while the temperature still remains very uh, low. But now what we do we simply warm up this process fluid so that it can be brought back to the same condition as it entered into the compressor. So, that is how we carry out this compression this liquefaction process or efficient process in general. So, in both the cases the basic thermodynamic process remains the same. Now, what are the various utility used means that means, what are the various types of uh, fluid and other things which help in carrying out the process. So, first is that the process fluid may be the refrigerator refrigerant in case of refrigeration. That means, whatever refrigeration whenever we are talking of refrigerator there is some process fluid is uh, undergoing the cycle on this cycle. So, there we are using the refrigerant to carry out the refrigeration or if we want to liquefy the particular gas then the gas itself is the process fluid. So, depending on my purpose the process fluid may be uh, is the refrigerator refrigerant or the actual process fluid which needs to be liquefied. And the refrigeration cycle may be a part of a refrigeration or liquefaction cycle. We will find later on that in some of the liquefaction cycles in some of the refrigeration cycle we again need a secondary refrigeration cycle. So, this refrigeration cycle may be a, a come as a secondary utility cycle for the actual liquefaction or refrigeration cycles. Then we have two types of temperature source for refrigeration M means that you know that whenever this uh, fluid the uh, purpose of this refrigeration is to extract the heat from some cold source because it is the reverse of the heat pump means that we are trying to take out the heat from a cold source and eject it to a higher temperature. So, for this we need to do some work on the system as per the second law of thermodynamics. So, we need some temperature source and these temperature sources may be of two types one may be isothermal source it means uh, the, there is a constant temperature and how can we maintain constant temperature it can be maintained if there is some, some kind of phase change. And as we know when there is a phase change means it can be either in terms of liquid to vapor or vapor to liquid, but when it is from liquid to vapor what we need we need to have the energy from the surroundings. And in case of vapor to liquid that is condensation in that case the uh, this heat will be released. So, we talk of that kind of phase change that due to this uh, phase change what happens the temperature will remain the same. So, depending on where we are trying to take the temperature inside the te system. So, we will be doing this kind of um, source. So, when the vapor is coming to liquid phase it will uh, release the energy and that release that energy will be taken up by the particular heat exchanger. Uh, and then we have isobaric source isobaric means there is no phase change it is simply that the pressure remains constant 
pressure remains constant, but there will be a temperature change. That, that means, there is a sensible heat transfer during this type of isobaric source. So, with the um, uh, cycle can run either with a um, with an isothermal source or with an isobaric source as we shall see later. And generally, there sink there must be sinks like we have talking talks of source, then there has to be a sink. So, sink is where the heat is rejected by the particular refrigeration or liquefaction cycle. So, generally the sink is taken to the atmosphere and that we know that as atmosphere provides an isothermal sink. That means, the temperature of the atmosphere will not change drastically for uh, moderate amount of refrigeration and um, liquefaction. Now, let us compare the difference between the or the, uh, the compare the liquefaction and refrigeration. I mean, what are the similarities or dissimilarities? We found so far that the principle of the operation is almost the same okay, with some small changes it's almost the same. So, we find that the liquid accumulates in case of liquefaction and this accumulated liquid is taken out from the system and that makes it a open system. Whereas, in case of refrigeration there is no liquid, uh, accumulation of the liquid. So, because nothing has to be taken out of the system. So, it is a closed system and generally it is the unbalanced flow. Unbalanced means the amount of the gas that has been um, warm cooled that same gas is some of it is liquefied and taken out of the system and the rest of it is sent back for recycling. So, that means, this these two amount that is the amount that is cooled and the amount that is recycled are not the same and the difference between the two is the amount of the liquefied gas. So, this is an unbalanced flow. On the other hand, if you talk of refrigeration, it is a balanced flow means whatever amount is cooled from the uh, compressor, the same amount after undergoing the cycle is sent back to the compressor. So, that is how it becomes a closed cycle. So, because we are losing the some amount of the mass in the system uh, in the liquefaction cycle. So, we need to provide the makeup fluid from outside to compensate for the fluid taken out of the system. Whereas, in case of refrigeration there is no need of any kind of makeup fluid provided we assume that there is no leakage from the system. Now, when we talk of thermodynamic ideal cycle, uh, why we need to uh, talk of them? Because they are studied to compare the performance of the various types of refrigeration or the liquefaction systems which we are using in practice. So, to compare these various types of real life refrigeration and the liquefaction uh, systems, we need to know the performance of an ideal uh, cycle. And these ideal means that they operate reversibly means there is no entropy generation. So, that is how the, we define this reversible uh, processes as per thermodynamics. So, if there is no uh, uh, generation of entropy we take it to be reversible and as we know that uh, in our in practice it is almost impossible to obtain the reversible processes. Now, first we come to the ideal refrigeration and that is Carnot cycle. I again I will not go into details of it, I will give you the um, some basic knowledge about this cycle and Carnot's cycle is shown in this particular figure. This is the figure and this here we have represented in the temperature entropy diagram. So, let us look into whatever and the, how this thing is going on. Suppose, from this state 1 I have the particular process fluid uh, at the same ambient condition, it will now be compressed. Now, when we are compressing it uh, um, uh, to make it ideal, we want to uh, put it in a very uh, um, isothermal way, but Carnot assumed that this is going isentropically. So, in this as far as Carnot is concerned, this is isentropic compression. So, and when this compression is occurring, we have to input the work of compression that is given by the W c. So, after undergoing this uh, compression, what happens? We take it to a condenser and in this condenser, what we do that if it is a phase change that is isothermal, then there will be some amount of heat rejected okay, to the sink and this amount of heat rejected is taken as Q H, the H uh, stands for hot and then T H is the temperature of the hot that means, the higher temperature okay, hot or higher temperature 
and after this then it comes to a turbine or some expansion device where it will be further expanded and during this expansion what happens again this expansion is carried out isentropically as far as the Carnot cycle is concerned. So, this particular um, uh, rejection is isothermal and then this expansion is again isentropic. The isentropic means reversible adiabatic and after this expansion it goes to evaporator when it goes to evaporator in this case we are having a constant temperature and this constant temperature comes only when we have a saturated liquid here. So, this saturated liquid will undergo a phase change and it will go back to uh, a, a at a constant temperature the heat will be taken out. So, this is the space from which which we are we are main trying to maintain at um, at cool. So, this is the T c representing that space where that for example, T c may be our refrigerator okay, at our home. So, that is the T c we want to maintain cold and from there we are taking this Q c and this is how again this is uh, uh, this upper evaporation. So, the, we are getting this uh, um, gas and again this is compressed. So, this is how we are operating this Carnot cycle with uh, isotropic compression, isothermal heat rejection, isentropic expansion and isothermal heat addition. So, okay. so, this is on the TL diagram this particular dome is shows the uh, demarcates the saturated liquid line and saturated vapor line and in between this is happening. And now same thing may be represented in a P V diagram here we see this is the isothermal compression and then it is isentropic uh, heat rejection again it is getting further compressed and isothermal expansion and adiabatic expansion. This is how this is we are representing this on a pressure volume diagram and this can also be found in any of the uh, thermodynamic books. So, we can represent all these uh, systems in various manners. Okay? So, this is another way of putting uh, the Carnot cycle. Now, here without any derivation I shall be giving you the final expressions. Here we have first the coefficient of performance of refrigerator and what is this? It measures the performance of a refrigerator and denoted by C O P and this is the way it is defined that it is equal to the amount of heat that has been taken up from the cold space and this is the amount of heat that has been rejected. So, this is this we are taking the absolute values of these things and this we are writing in this fashion and this again can be written in terms of the temperature of the uh, source and the sink. So, these are the various notations used in this particular equation and this C O P may be more than 1. And here we see that how the C O P changes with the temperature of the source and here we find the warm temperature suppose we take it is 294 K we find that as the refrigeration temperature increases the C O P also increases. So, that means, the C O P is dependent both on the T H and T C. So, this is for a given T H how the C O P changes with T C. Next we come to C O P for an ideal cold gas refrigerator this is also many a times used in this case it means heat is absorbed at varying temperature without phase change and assumed to be isobaric. That means, it is not happening uh, at um, a um, uh, constant uh, temperature, but happening here you can see that Q C which is taken up it is not happening at constant temperature as earlier, but it is changing from T 1 to T 2 the temperature is increasing that is there is a sensible heat transfer, but otherwise the heat is rejected at the constant temperature. So, if that means, the it is, it is not now Carnot it is deviating from the Carnot. So, it will have a different COP from Carnot. So, if we take this particular system, uh, system which is more common in practice in this case the ideal uh, COP ideal COP means um, that we are um, assuming that there is no heat leakage there is no friction in the pipelines etcetera and all the compressors all the uh, if, uh, expanders all they are 100 percent efficient and the heat exchanger is 100 percent efficient. So, assuming all those things whatever C O P we are getting that is the ideal C O P and if we make a energy balance we will get this particular expression for uh, the C O P and here we are this H 1 H 2 are corresponding to these two states and S 3 S 4 are the corresponding to the other states. So, you would find that here S 1 is 1 2 3 4. 
So, these are the various states we are knowing the enthalpy and the entropies and if we consider an ideal gas then the H 2 minus H 1 is given by C p delta t okay. and this H 3 minus H 4 will be equal to H 2 minus H 1 and is given by this particular expressions from the thermodynamic book you can find these expressions. And since P 1 equal to P 2 then H 3 minus H 4 will be equal to this will be 0 we will get in terms of purely in terms of temperature. And so, we can see that for the ideal COP, if I now put all these things in this expression, we find this is given in terms of this T 2 by T 1 that is this T 2 by T 1 and this in terms of the T H. So, this how this is how we represent the uh, ideal COP for the cold gas refrigerator. And here in this particular figure, what we show that how the coefficient of performance changes with this particular T 1 by T 0 for various values of T 2 by T 1. And this T 2 by T 1 what we find that when T 2 by T 1 is a 5 here, 2 here and as it goes towards 1 that means, we are going towards the Carnot. So, when T 2 by T 1 is there, so whatever uh, COP we are getting that COP will be corresponding to the Carnot COP. So, that is why I say that as T 2 1 T 2 by T 1 approaches unity, the ideal COP approaches the Carnot COP. Okay. Now, next we come to figure of merit and what is figure of merit? This is another performance uh, measure for the actual refrigerators. So, far we have seen the COP, COP is talking about only one given refrigerator, but when we want to compare the various refrigerators available with us, again we need some datum okay? and for that uh, we need uh, another parameter that is the figure of merit and this figure of merit is defined in terms of a ratio of the COPs. So, this is the um, COP of the actual system and this is the COP of the ideal system. Okay. And if we compare this, we get the value of FOM and FOM is uh, similar to not same, but is similar to the efficiency. So, we find that FOM will be always be between 0 and 1 and it cannot go beyond 1 unlike COP. So, um, 0 means it is no good, the COP is 0 and FOM, FOM is equal to 1 means it is the ideal cycle. Okay. So, that is how we can we compare the various types of liquefaction and refrigeration systems in terms of COP and FOM. And these are the some references where you can get more detailing about these principles. Thank you.